talked about knowledge, that uh, digitizable and quantifiable and all that. You know, that is what the, what the contemporary West, contemporary West believes. And uh, remember in 1995 onwards, there was a knowledge bandwagon, you know, and Lyotard's uh, famous book, where he says that now with the computer, knowledge will be democratized. I think which is one of the most uh, foolish statements that I have heard, because uh, a democratic knowledge must not be, must not depend on many intermediate, intermediate technologies between the learner and the object of knowledge. See, if you are going to democratize knowledge through computer, so you are, you are saying that your learners will be educated, they will be literate, not only that, they will know English, and they will be computer literate, they will know how to open the computer, they will also know how to search and scroll, and they will also be able to fix, and uh, when there is a, you know, sort of a glitch, they'll be able to fix that. And they will, you know, no, this is hardly democratic. The most democratic knowledge system is the oral system of knowledge that has prevailed in India. Oral. Because all that the learner needs are ears. And it need not be literate. God has provided lids for the eyes, hasn't provided any lids for the ear. So you have to listen and you gain knowledge. That's the most democratic. No technology intervenes between the learner and the object of knowledge. In fact, a Japanese, very famous Japanese uh, professor of uh, philosophy who was offered a Xerox chair of applied knowledge by American universities. He turned down the offer. He said, I don't understand what is applied knowledge. Because to me, he says, all knowledge has application, but you can't say it will be applied in a day or 24 hours. It may find application 100 years or 1,000 years later. But knowledge is an end in itself. He said. And he talked about two kinds of knowledge. One is the digitizable knowledge, quantifiable, which you can write down, measure, and you know. And the other is the non-quantifiable, non-measurable, non-digitizable knowledge, which is a much larger quantity than the digitizable. For example, the entire inner world of the human beings you know, is also an object of knowledge. But you can never measure happiness or sorrow. If you ask somebody, somebody says, please don't talk to me. I'm very unhappy. You can't ask how much unhappy you are, this much or this much. You can't quantify. You can't quantify sorrow. You can't quantify happiness. You can't quantify any of the human emotions. And the emotional world is much larger, you know, than the physical world in which we live, because the physical world only stimulates the emotional world. And according to the, that professor, the non-digitizable knowledge, which is vast, it is innate in every human being. Digitizable knowledge you have to acquire, but the non-digitizable knowledge is innate. It comes into you from within. And any human being, any person, even the, even the smallest karmachari of a factory, because of that, is capable of coming up with a new idea and creates new knowledge. It's not only those who have, uh, you know, sort of... Uh, who have gone through you know, software and hardware and all those things only they can create, you know, scientifically trained and IIT people who can create new things. But as you know, in India, jugads are created by everybody, by the villagers. You know, they make things which are very useful to them and which perhaps, you know, I, I remember myself, I mean, I am a man of humanities and arts, I was in a girls' university, and we, we found that the girls, village girls, who were earlier making uplas, you know, uplas, like this, 
when they got went to the university and they went back to the village they were not willing to do that because you know hath gande ho jate hain aur badi ghin lagti hai and you know all that and if but if that is not done in a dairy oriented dairy dairy oriented state like haryana depending on milk and everything then what will happen after some years gradually people will start keeping cattle there will be no cattle and you know the whole character of the civilization will change so we decided to make an upla making machine uh, the girls are not ready but let's make an upla making machine and the village village iron smith you know he prepared it i will not go more into this i went to iit rudki later and i showed it to them and they they said why didn't you ask us iit people i said we didn't ask you because you know it would have cost us 5 lakh rupees while the iron smith made it for 12000 and your machine would have had two sims and three chips and if it it had gone wrong we'll have to send it to bangalore or bombay or somebody but here no sim no chip it can be done mechanically it can be done with electricity if the village electricity is not there all the time so you can do it mechanically anyway like this so you know anybody can come up with knowledge it's not only quantifiable but then that's why i wanted to say there are two kinds of knowledge this is an important idea digitizable and non digitizable and non digitizable is a very large you know very large body of knowledge we are today talking about scientific india as a scientific temper and the scientific heritage of india hmm? india scientific temper and and its heritage scientific heritage and uh, we'll start by go to the next uh, we'll start by why are we talking about this subject because for the last 30 40 years 30 or 40 years you know there have been many indian scholars very indian scholars devoted and dedicated to this country i have worked hard and produced number of volumes on india sciences you know rajiv malhotra ji produced a whole set of you know books on india's metallurgy india's physics india's chemistry and so on and so on now this so much has been done it appears in order to show to the west show to the west that in india also we have had a lot of science what is the why, why 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 does one have to do it because in the last 100 years the western scholars have given the impression that indian knowledge is all about kalidas and all about rasa and all about moksha you know mukti that is india's knowledge is mostly otherworldly that the indian people are otherworld hmm? the hindus particularly you know they are otherworldly people now this nothing can be farther from the truth you see uh, hindus are perhaps the greatest lovers of gold their heaven is made of gold you know heaven is made of gold so indians are not otherworldly so the because this impression was given and people thought that india doesn't have much to offer for the contemporary civilization which is a technological civilization scientific civilization so they dismissed indian knowledge as you know metaphysical otherworldly and so on now this is this is as i said wrong second reason is we need not have taken it seriously if somebody tells me that you are not scientific i won't mind because i don't really understand what is being scientific let's say but then we we took it seriously because science and scientific have a lot of prestige the moment you tell somebody oh this is very scientific hmm? so people say oh, oh well fine that there are no questions no questions asked so because science has a great prestige in our times has had great prestige particularly because after the renaissance after the renaissance in europe you know their knowledge shifted from god to man and their means of knowledge epistemology shifted from 
the book bible to experiment and reason to reason that is earlier during medieval period they were mostly thinking talking about god about man's relation to god and you see about and the great authority for the discussion was the bible the book but in renaissance the focus shifted from god to man because man's life in this world was not comfortable europe is a cold country very cold permafrost the uh, so to make human life comfortable and then at that time they shifted from god to man and from book to reason two names are important francis bacon his advancement of learning where he talked about you know the experiment experimental method experiment it must be experiential experiential and not depending on faith not on faith but experiment and descartes no because francis bacon is the father of empiricism empiricism mean empirical means something connected to related to the actual world actual world that you see that you see that is empirical and he is an empiricist west has two branches both are in fact related to the physical world quantifiable observable but these are two different approaches empirical empiricism and the other one is descartes descartes is a, a rationalist so empiricist and a rationalist and his book is on method on method and these two books are at the root of contemporary western western notion of science scientific and the prestige of science the two are uh, i mean they are very simple i feel like explaining things you know although it will take it takes time and then but then empiricism is simply that you know let's say you watch a hundred times you watch that when a cat comes the mouse runs away but you watch 100 times you see and then you draw a conclusion reasoning that the mouse is afraid of the cat hmm? you see it once you wait you see it second time you wait so you have to verify large body of data and then you draw a conclusion in rationalist method you see once and you draw a conclusion you see you see the rat the mouse running away when the cat comes and you say you have a hypothesis that a mouse a mouse is afraid always afraid of the cat and then you verify it verify it while in the empirical method you collect the data 100 100 examples and so this is two means of these are you see observational science the method of science is observation observational and the observations are classified classified and then they are you know they are put in or explained by certain general principles so for example 100 times the mouse runs and you know you put it a principle a mouse is afraid of the cat so that's a principle like this i am giving a gross example this is how you draw that the earth goes around the sun that the sun is the center of the universe and all those things through observation and uh, because descartes said the goal of knowledge is to bend nature to man's purpose nature to man's purpose so you know they created the instruments uh, telescopes and uh, bioscopes and those uh, uh, microscopes and so on by looking because observation is the basic method so this reason and experiment reason and experiment prestige science and go to the next slide what is scientific temper the scientific temper therefore is the is a spirit of inquiry of the natural world of the world which you can observe which you can experience because uh, what is the difference between experience and experiment experiment is a constructed experience constructed experience you see for example suppose you are watching you are just sitting 
somewhere and there is something on the ground you know and uh, sulfur is on the ground something your your that uh, your what you have those fireworks in diwali which have sulfur and when you light fire then you know it becomes a liquid so you watch that is experience but in the laboratory you can set up an experiment which we used to do in matriculation you know we were given sulfur and we will we put in a tube and we will light a light as something under this and when it starts melting we will note the temperature hmm? note the temperature well foolish boys like me i mean they will forget to look it at that time and they will find that the sulfur is evaporating then they will shut off the light and let it cool and when it starts cooling they will say this is the melting temperature and of course we got about one or two marks out of 50 for that experiment but the constructed experiment is experience constructed experience is experiment you see so scientific temper is basically a temper a temper of inquiry you ask questions you are not you do not work on assumptions you ask questions and the answers you verify answers you verify you observe whether those things actually happen and you use reason logic and you you logically argue and what what conclusion you reach you verify it by going into experience actually whether this happens or not so you check this is the scientific temper attitude of inquiry now i think uh, we have in india we have in india classic examples of uh, this spirit of inquiry you know spirit of inquiry uh, i'll give you uh, let me give you first indian words reason reason is tark tark and uh, in europe only after renaissance they prestige the reason although aristotle aristotle in his syllogism you know he was telling you how to reason how to reason but during the middle ages it was lost it is only after renaissance they reconstruct when did tark reason become a major means of knowledge in india when with mahatma buddha you know mahatma buddha was a completely logical reasoner you know and buddhist logic there is a book by shatterabaski a russian buddhist logic is taught is taught these days is taught these days in all major universities when you teach logic you have to teach buddhist logic so india had this reason as an epistemology important epistemology in 6th century bc 6th century bc and uh, if you want to see actually this in operation reasoning you have to see any of the shada darshanas any of those uh, any even natya shastra any text or ashtadhyayi of panini and you will see how closely these people reason before they reach a conclusion so indian indian temper india's texts india's texts i am i have mentioned uh, panini i can mention yasks nirukta you can say kotilya's arthashastra you can take patanjali's yoga sutras you can take nyaya you can take vaisheshika and you see all these are examples of reasoning close reasoning in order to reach an understanding of what actually is what is the word for that is tatya tatya kya hai punjabi mein kehte tat ki hai tat tatya tatya kya hai and mahatma buddha was known as tathagat tathagat what is the meaning tatya gata who went on the path of what is and not what you want to believe but what is so indian mind is basically basically oriented oriented to reasoning to abruve look at any text look at the amount of data in ashtadhyayi in ashtadhyayi which is a grammar the amount of physical data about the about geography and about politics and about sociology of india hmm? india is next only to mahabharat 
so much data. So, you know, observational, all the examples that Panini gives, for example, for, for his grammar, they come from his observation. And the Nartya Shastra, Nartya Shastra, you know, remarkable text, remarkable, remarkable for how minutely, minutely, Bharat Muni has observed human conduct, human relationships, and how people behave when they are under certain emotions, certain emotions. You see, for example, he says that uh, when you like somebody and you say, I like you, then your hand moves towards your own self. I like you. I like this. I like this. Your hand comes towards you. But when you dislike something, you say, oh, throw it away. Keep it away. Your hand moves away from you. So, you know, remarkable observations about human behavior under the influence of emotions, under the influence of emotions. So, Indian texts are a great example of observation, of reasoning, of reasoning, and of framing principles, principles based on data and based on reasoning. And we have, if you want to look for experiment, I'll repeat it again. There is a Jaratakaru Rishi Katha, you know, Jaratakaru who believed that you can explain everything in the world by a single principle, single principle. So first he thought that, you know, you can, the word Shabd is a very powerful thing. So he put a stick, he put a stick against a tree about 50 feet away and said, come, come, come. But you know, it won't come. It didn't come. Then he thought, that it is the mind force. You have to focus your mind on that. And he focused his mind and tried to draw the, draw the stick towards himself by focusing all his energy on his mind. And the stick had started moving, had started moving. But at that point, a princess going through the forest in a chariot, the chariot met with an accident and the princess fell and she was crying, she was groaning and Jaratkaru, who was a young man who knew grammatical gender but did not know actual gender, physical gender, you know, he picked her up, put her on his back and made her sit against the bank of the mountain, like the bank of the rock. And uh, after that, he developed a permanent itch on his back, you know, where he had put that girl. So he forgot all about that single principle. And you know, the girl fell in love and that's a long story. But the point is, Jarat Karu's experiment, you see his experiment, he put a stick there. He didn't say that it's possible. He showed it. He tried to prove by experiment. So the Indian, Indian scientific temper is not alien to the Indian mind. Let's go to the next quickly, theory of knowledge. See, we are now talking of Indian, vast body of Indian intellectual text. You see, it has, it has, it has both digitizable and non-digitizable knowledge. You see? Look at, for example, the discipline of poetics, literary theory. Hmm? Literary theory. In literary theory, you have two divisions, Alankara Shastra and Sahitya Vidya. Alankara Shastra. Shastra is a scientific text, you know. Shastra is a scientific text. So Alankara Shastra. Alankara refers to all the figures of speech. And the entire body of Alankara Shastra is quantifiable, digitizable, and you know, countable, you know. So it is, it is absolutely scientific. So it is called Alankara Shastra. But Sahitya Vidya, which deals with the effect of poetry on a, on a reader, the emotional effect and other, it's not digitizable. But again, it is explained at great length in such a way that a Sahridya, a person who is as evolved in his emotions as the poet, will begin to understand the emotion in the same way as the poet has experienced it or the person about whom the poem is written has experienced it. Dasharat's sorrow when Rama departs. 
Valmiki experiences the suffering of Dasharatha and writes the Ramayana. Then Ramayana is enacted, enacted in Ram Leela's public shows. Of course, it is enacted by Shri Ram Leela Kendra also, very sophisticated. But in every village, Ram story is enacted. And the village Dhobi plays Dasharath. But that, that village Dhobi, washman, washerman, he has to reach that sorrow of Dasharatha. If he is to be a convincing, uh, but you know, this is not digitizable. This is not quantifiable. You can only judge. Some people will say he is very good. Some people will say he is not good. Right? But in Alankar Shastra, it is a digitizable knowledge. So we have in India's theory of knowledge, what is theory of knowledge? Let me, for the sake of sharing with everybody, you know, knowledge, you ask five, four or five questions. What is the object of knowledge? What is the object of knowledge? That's the first question. Second, who, who receives knowledge? Who is the receiver of knowledge? What is the source of knowledge? Where does that knowledge rest? Hmm? Third, what is the nature of knowledge? Any, anything which we call knowledge, like for example, uh, uh, let's say we believe that you should speak the truth. So this, if this is knowledge, what is it? Is it a predication? Or is it, does it consist in action? Or it is true only if there are truthful people. Truthful people. So is it adjectival? Is it a verb? Or is it a noun? Knowledge is something which exists per se, or knowledge is an action, or knowledge is a quality, quality, quality of the mind. So we discuss these things. Then whatever you call knowledge, how do you validate it? How do you establish that the, what you call knowledge is true knowledge? Generally, when we speak, let us say, I, I will say, oh, this table is beautiful. It will appear, it is a, it is a categorical sentence. It will appear that this table is beautiful means this table is beautiful. But in fact, the whole sentence is Kapil Kapoor says this table is beautiful. So it's not an objective piece of knowledge. It is the opinion of a person. And it has to be validated. Whether you validate it by asking 10 people, 20 people, 40 people, you have to develop a method. If how many people should agree when you say categorically that this is true, that this, that this table is beautiful. So, you know, validation. Now, we have many typologies of knowledge. Typologies, I will not again must spend much time here because I want to go to the, the other, the important part. The, the typology, the, for example, Shastra and Kavya, science and poetry. Then we have, you know, Shruti, Samriti and Kavya, you know. Shruti, Samriti, Kavya, and we have this uh, knowledge which is received, knowledge which is recalled, and knowledge which is created by an individual in his imagination. These are typologies of the, what do you call, validity of knowledge. How valid knowledge is. The Shruti is like a, like a statement of science. Samriti recalled, something recalled, is not absolutely categorical. You may, you may either change the word, you may question. And Kavya, of course, is a one man's opinion. One man's opinion. So you have typologies like this. Panini has fivefold. I won't go into them. That is knowledge, knowledge uh, series. India has a number of knowledge series. And one thing which you perhaps like would be, you know, the last one, which... Uh, uh, my students used to like very much. The Paninian is, you know, uh, I've just given you Shruti Samriti Kavya, but Panini says Drishta Prokta Upagyata Vyakhyan or Kavya. So Panini, Panini says the most non-contingent knowledge, dependable knowledge, is knowledge that is produced by what you see, observational. Observational. And at the end is the Kavya, you know, it is individual. But there is a, there is a Parushaya, a Parushaya. Knowledge, which is contingent on an individual, 
and knowledge which is not contingent on an individual, right? And one is Prabhu Samvit, one typology, which my students used to like. They are all young, like quite a few of you, perhaps, who are sitting there. The Prabhu Samvita, a, a statement which has the, the validity of God's statement, you know, like the laws of science, action and reaction are equal and opposite. So Prabhu Samvita, it is the most authentic knowledge. Second is Suhrid Samvita, that is approved by well-wisher, well-wisher. You see, for example, all your Itihasa Purana, you can change the language, but what they teach, the idea cannot be changed. And you know, I example I used to give was that when I come out in the month of July, rainy season, and if I don't carry my umbrella, my wife will shout, umbrella. So the words are sound very harsh, but the intention is that of a well wisher. Well wisher. Suhurid Samhita. And the third is Kanta Samhita, Jiski validity is only on its charm of state. Charm. For example, the example I used to give that when a young boy and a girl fall in love, the boy tells the girl, Main akash se sitare tod kar tumhari odni ko samar dunga. I will pluck stars from the sky and you know, embroider your chunni or something. Now the girl knows that he cannot do three feet high jump. Hmm? But she is very happy to hear this, that he will pluck stars from there. So this is charm of the statement. Literature, poetry, generally poetry statements are like that. Okay? So different typologies. When I reach the point that I want to reach today, where you see, uh, where we are going to talk about special knowledge, I will talk about the categories typology again. I wanted to give you an example of analyticity, but I think it will from Vaisheshika Sutras. You know, what is called gravitation by Newton is called the theory of bhar, you know, mass by Vaisheshika. And you know how he says that there is first an inspiration, then there is a decision, and then there is an instrument chosen, and then there is an act, act, action. And that act has a result, a result, and it goes on till the, the force which is applied in the act, which is called sanskara, it lasts. And then, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's kriya. Karam leads to a kriya. Karam leads to a kriya. And then when the sanskara weakens, then the kriya ends. Take an example of a, of a bow and an arrow. So we decide, let's say we decide, I decide, that I am going to shoot this arrow today to 40 or 50 feet. That is the prerna. I decide, okay, I'm going to do it now. And I take a bow and I take an arrow. And then, then, then there is the purusha, purusha cheshta, pratyancha. That is the, that is the karna shakti, the, the power of the instrument. Like this, like to the ears. And then I let go the arrow. The karm is, the karm is firing the arrow, letting go of the arrow. And it followed by a kriya. The arrow moves through the sky with a force which comes from the karma, from the karana and the purush cheshta. The amount, how much pratencha kichke and the karana ka bo ka strength. It moves. And the movement of the arrow in the sky is a series of pushes. Every time, every split second, the arrow's movement is pushing the next movement, pushing the next movement, pushing the next movement. The force which was originally applied is getting reduced, but it is there. That is why the arrow is still moving till, till the sanskara, the force diminishes or vanishes. And then the arrow, because it has mass, it has mass and its mass is greater than that of the environment, it falls to the ground. It falls to the ground. So the whole theory, what uh, Newton said is the earth attracts the object, is reversed by Kannada. And then no, it is not because the wisps of wool, the wisps of wool, 
they fly in the air the earth doesn't pull them down hai na wo jo cotton wool dekha nahi wo halki halki wo jo udti rehti hai hawa mein udte rehte hain wo to niche nahi aate you see and andheri mein tinka usme to theek hai ke vayu hai there is air but you see in the vasheshik sutra if you want to see the analyticity and the logic of the indian mind then look at the vasheshik sutras statement about why things fall on the ground is different from uh, anyways so we come now to the next the heritage of knowledge i said india has a scientific temper gave some examples now heritage of heritage of science in fact practically in every modern discipline every modern discipline of uh, what is called science we have parallel indian discipline with a much longer history and decidedly definite texts so we have a tradition of texts and thinkers in any number of for example in the in the course we developed for the cbse knowledge traditions and practices of india which is free download from cbse website anybody interested can download knowledge traditions and practices of india it is in two volumes two volumes there are 21 disciplines covered and those disciplines include astronomy chemistry environmental sciences life sciences mathematics metallurgy agriculture architecture language society and state etc 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 they are all modern disciplines and you have in all of these you have all of these primary indian thinking primary indian thinkers you see and texts and texts so it's not just claiming that there are thinkers but there are texts which are there there are theories you have you have the your badhayana sutras and you have bhaskaracharya and you have aryabhatta you know who are decidedly their their ideas anticipate the western theories by at least 1400 years or 1200 years or 1500 years if not more bodhayans also in fact anticipates by more than 2000 years you see the so there are number of texts and thinkers there are number of disciplines which are actually like modern science so what is called modern science is not unknown to india and there are people have produced lot of volumes as i said rajiv mautra ji produced series of volumes these the volumes have been produced by now iits are also doing that so there are this but visible visible markers of scientific heritage there are visible markers of scientific heritage for example the iron pillar in qutub uh, minar now the iron pillar is 1600 years old 1700 years old and it has not rusted it has not rusted while the eiffel eiffel tower in paris built about uh, 60 years ago needs many millions every year to prevent rusting you see the difference eiffel tower made of steel iron needs every year millions of rupees and here is the iron pillar standing for 1600 years in the open in all kind of dust and rain and it has not rusted so metallurgy metallurgy how advanced what kind of combination of metals and we have evidence that the zinc mines of rajasthan in rajasthan when you go towards from rajasthan to gujarat you have the zinc mines and those zinc mines there is clear data that 600 bc onwards zinc was being manufactured from those mines and uh, the, uh, the the sword that the arabs used sword the steel of that sword came from india i am talking now of 7th century the steel with which arab swords were made came from india that steel is flexible steel what is called in modern terminology woods woods steel it was manufactured in india in round in the around the christian era beginning of the christian era from first century onwards you see 
we have manufacturing of woods steel which was manufactured in europe only in the mid 19th century mid 19th century. you see these are all uh, you know verifiable facts so these are not uh, blatant claims of a uh, blind uh, devotee of the country but uh, these are all verifiable facts and then you know the concept of zero the concept of the the numerals 1 to 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 which are called arabic numerals these days but you know what arabs call them what do arabs call them hinse 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 is hind se from india and even in urdu we call them hinse hinse so zero the numerals 1 to 9 then the decimal system then the value of pi the distance of the sun from the earth and above all the concept of infinity all these are invent indian inventions if you take them out there is no western science possible as uh, barack obama when he came to india in bombay university he said that if you people had not invented zero and the numerals we will have no computers today so the very foundation foundational concepts of science were india's contribution and they were made by mathematicians astronomers grammarians in fact people say that the concept of zero was given a full definition by panini in his ashtadhyay where he talked about three kinds of lopa disappearance three kinds of absence anyways and then you know in 6th century if you read al basham's wonder that was india he quotes on the fly leaf a statement by an arab scholar 6th century arab scholar he said the arab scholar says 6th century who can rival the hindus in their sciences in their mathematics in their astronomy who can the rival the hindus so you see there is the testimony there are the texts and there are the visible markers like the iron pillar you have a monolith kalashnath temple near uh, in maharashtra near uh, near uh, you know ajanta aroda where from top to bottom a huge temple almost size of a building was carved from top to bottom from a single rock single rock it will not be it is not be possible with all the sophisticated you know measurements possible today to do it today generally we build from bottom to top how you carve from top to bottom from a single rock and it is a rock and a rock if a, the artist makes a mistake how does he correct it it is not correctable so you have to make it every every stroke has to be correct every stroke of the scalpel has to be correct you know or a sustained creation right and then you have examples of idols which are suspended in the air there are no support on top no support below they are suspended in the air and in the belu temple you have a revolving pillar a revolving pillar and it is it is on the ground it is on the ground and it revolves but you can pass a paper through it how is it possible what kind of engineering and then you have you know temple pillars which produce musical notes stone pillars which produce saregama you know sargama all the notes seven notes are produced by seven pillars in the temple so these this is not religious architecture it involves you know calculation it involves high degree of calculation of course from implementation high degree of calculation and the use of the material the material it is easier to produce a note produce notes in a piano you know with the you know the kind of a balloon that you have there here but how do you produce music from stones 
from stones so you have the visible visible you know sciences you have the testimony of foreigners you have the knowledge traditions and practices of india by cbsc you have any number of sciences which is modern so modern sciences were not alien to india even 2000 2500 years ago okay now we come to come to the fifth but what what makes india different and superior and what makes india the teacher of the world are the characteristic vedic sciences you know vedic sciences there are 18 nigamas 120 agamas and 64 divya vidya extraordinary disciplines go to the next nigama i will not go into detail these are familiar you can read any there are four vedas rigveda yajur sam and atharva you have four upavedas ayurved which is medicine dhanurved which is military science gandharva ved which is music and the arthaveda arthaveda is that deals with meaning eh? and polity 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 arthashastra polity society and polity six vedangas vedanga literally means sciences which are auxiliary to the vedas and they are very old more than 3000 years old and they are sciences they are sciences shiksha phonetics chand meter kalp sociology nirukt etymology vyakaran grammar and jyotish astronomy or mathematics these it was anybody who wanted to read the vedas he had to master these six sciences only then he could understand understand the vedic statements and vedanga then uttarangas four later disciplines which were considered necessary itihasa purana itihas is history purana is old history you know puranas are mythical narratives itihas are narratives of what happened itihas literally means this is how it happened this happened and purana means this is what happened in the earlier times i would don't have time to go into why the puranas are all narratives are all mythical you see we, the indian mind is, was not interested in the individual but they made a mythical that is generalized it generalized it in a symbolic manner so that the conclusions you draw from an episode or episodes are applicable to all mankind all mankind and not individuals so puranas are mythical generalized narratives you see and nyaya nyaya is logic you see and uh, aristotle's syllogism has three steps indian syllogism has five steps and what is remarkable is that in the indian syllogism there is a rooting to the observational fact there is one element which says drishtant give an example example and the example comes from observation you see for example wherever there is wherever they wherever they if you see smoke there must be fire because wherever there is fire there is smoke you see so like this they go on and as for example in those days in the kitchen these days of course you have gas so you won't see any smoke there but in those days when you gobar jalta tha aur lakdi jalti thi to kitchen mein jab aag jalti thi to dhuaan hota tha that was the drishtant so logic also was related to ordinary life on the life but is a five step syllogism rather than three step and uh, mimamsa is analysis nyaya is logic mimamsa is analysis it teaches how to analyze analyticity you see and yoga yoga is not just hatha yoga you know building your muscles it's about cognition and cognitive processes because the yoga claims that we follow all the steps at the end of it there are two results number one note the words your mind acquires a speed now speed is a quality by which you define a a computer you know iski speed zyada hai ye five ram isme isme panch ram lage hue hain ram ke ram ek hi baat hai aur isme 10 ram lage hue hain ya 15 ram lage hue hain iski speed zyada hai so your mind acquires a speed and number two you are able to experience things without actually experiencing them 
you develop that ability that you can infer, you can infer generalized principles without actually undergoing the experiment, without actually undergoing the experiment. So these are the 18 nigamas, come to agamas. Next. 18 samhetas, which are itihas, etc., and other mixed subjects. 18 siddhantas, chemistry, etc. These 18 are sciences. All these 18 are sciences. I will, if I started putting all the lists everywhere, then you can imagine how many slides it will take. 18 siddhantas are 18 sciences. Rasayan is chemistry, you know, chemistry. And six kalpas. Kalpas are sociology. Social system, social thought, and C, Uttar, relevant for the North, Purva, relevant for the East, Dakshin, relevant for the South, Pashtim, relevant for the West, and other Marg, relevant for Central India, around Vidarbha. So, you know, because as you know, that the social customs and practices vary from place to place, community to community. So, the social sciences were, you know, elaborately studied. It is unfortunate that Indian universities only Durkheim padate hain or West ki do char angreji ki kitabe padate hain. Nobody teaches Dharma Shastras, Driya Sutras and Dharma Sutras and all that. We have a massive body of sociological literature. You see? And you cannot understand Indian society without reading them. And then then the Yamala, Vrishti Vigyana, the science of rain, rain making. And other nemitikas, other instrumental sciences, instrumental sciences like making fire, like quelling fire, co quelling the forest fire, you know, or uh, you know, making uh, the water bodies, water bodies retain their water for long. Like this, these are practical sciences. There's these are called nemitika, nemitika are instrumental sciences. You see, and then eight uh, damaras. Nivarana, Nivarana Sahita Abhichara, Nivarana, of getting rid of things. Eight, eight disciplines which deal with getting rid of things, getting rid of danger, getting rid of fire, getting rid of illness, you know, like this. And 34 Mani Mantra Oshadis, 34 sciences which deal with what the, the, the stones, precious stones can do to the human body or the mantras. As you know, uh, at in the marriages, mantras are invoked. People in every auspicious occasion or even in death, the mantras are, you know, for example, they, as they say, you know, like, uh, you know, there are many. Anyways, there's no time to go into marriage or death. You know? But, you know, you have the mantras for marriage and you have mantras for death. And aushadis, there are sciences we deal with, you know, plants herbal plants, and what effect they have. So you have 120 agamas. And go to go next. Here, this is where I want to focus. These are 64 Divya Vidyas, extraordinary sciences. I want to focus on these because these are threshold sciences. These are not sciences which are based on observation. These are not sciences which, can, which have been cultivated by reason. And these are not sciences which you can qualify, quantify, and digitize, and so on, and so on, and so on. How do you arrive at these abilities? How do you arrive at this knowledge? These are extra, it is, these are threshold sciences. What the West says, threshold sciences. Some of you must be aware that following Heidegger and uh, the hermeneutics and uh, Husserl, Husserl and Heidegger, you know, in Europe after World War II, they realized that their science, their science, their destructive science has reached the limit and they have now to take a leap. They have to go beyond this and you can go beyond this only if you start working on consciousness. Consciousness. Chetana. Chaitanya. That is knowledge and abilities, knowledge and abilities, sciences, which are cultivated by consciousness. Consciousness. You see? by the human mind, by the human senses, by the human body, you see? And they are not based on quantification or something. Now, they are divided into four types. Manas, manas, those of the mind. Daivika, 
related to extraordinary powers, gods, let us say, but not gods really, extraordinary. Yagika, you know, which come from certain sacrifices. You do some anushthana and you produce something, produce something. And uh, bhautika, physical. Four types of these divya vidyas. Given that all the four above have 16 subtypes, so there the knowledge that demonstrates self-empowerment is of 64 types. Now, this is an important word. Self-empowerment. All these knowledge systems empower the individual. He gains power over himself, over the physical world, over the environment, over the environment, and over the human beings. You, you, there is no limit. That, but that the self-empowerment is of 64 kinds. Now, these were first envisioned by the rishis of India. And because of them, India was considered the guru of the world. And not because of Rasayan Shastra, metallurgy, or uh, you know, architecture. Well, those are available everywhere. But these are not available anywhere. These originated in India. And they are strictly, they are part of India. Many of these have been lost. But many, many of them, these have moved into, let's say, magic. Some have moved into something else. But you can find example of each one of them. Even today, somewhere or the other in India, you can find a person who is a master of these. Who is a master of these. Go to the next. So we first come to 16 types of self-empowerment. Manas. Those, these are powers, abilities related to the mind. And you achieve them. They are of two kinds. Powers related, 16 powers related to the mind. Manas. They are of two kinds. Eight, which are, you control the mind through yogic process. And you achieve some siddhis. You achieve some abilities. Huh? Second, there are eight that you achieve through controlling your senses. Do you see the difference? That of the 16 mind-related vidyas, disciplines, knowledge, eight are those which control the mind through yogic power and other eight that come to you from control of senses. So let's go to the next one. Eight through yogic power of mind control. Through yoga, you control the mind. Mind means consciousness. Now, you know, in our system, we have a concept of uh, sthul and sukshama. Sthul, gross and subtle. So there is a gross body and there is a subtle body. Gross and subtle. The subtle body itself has property, tanmatra. Tanmatra. You see? So you see, for example, you know, you have, for example, uh, let's say air. Air. Now, it's a, it's a sukshama is air you can feel. So it's a, it's a suksham is the sparsha. Sparsha. It touches. But then it's tanmatra can be. It cools, you know, the air cools. That is the tanamatra. You remember these three. Now, if through your chetana, chaitanya, if you control your mind, then you, or you control your body, you control the mind, then through mind, you will be able to control the body. Through mind. After all, you think of, you know, people say, koi somebody, koi kehta na, arikal, so but through elaborate practice, these are the powers that the human beings can attain. It is claimed, not only claimed, 
they are demonstrated in our literature in various characters. Anima, acquiring subtle form of the body by shrinking the body. Jab Hanuman ji ja rahe the, to Sursa ne kaha ke you have to enter my mouth. Itna bada muh khola. Sursa was a huge demoness. So usne kaha you cannot go without entering my mouth. So if Hanuman, it in normal body had entered, she would have chewed him up. But what did he do? He shrank his body to a small thing, entered his mouth, and before she could shut it, he came out. He came out. So shrinking the body, anima, power to shrink your body. Sukshama, you know, usko sukshama kar dena, tanma level pe le jana. Mahima, giving the body a gigantic form, desperate being in subtle form. Bobi in the, in the Ramayana, in Mahabharata, several examples. In literature, several examples. When, you know, Hanuman was finally convinced that you have to go across to Lanka, you know, he acquired a huge body. Huge body. So you're a large, you enlarge your body, enlarge your body. You know, if you have, if you have ordinary level pay, the idea that we have to understand is mind controlling the body, controlling not only the body, not only the actions of the body, not only the status of the body, but also the form and shape of the body. Form and shape of the body. Of course, it comes through a, a very elaborate process. Elaborate, ek anushthan, ek tap hai, tapas hai, jisse wo aata hai, mind ka. You see, mind, aajkal kya hota hai? For example, these days I am having problem with my legs. So I had my nerve test done in Delhi in a wonderful laboratory, you know, where they put electrodes on my legs and all that. And then they reached the conclusion, which I already knew, that can either be, you know, through long-term sugar problem, or it can be because a nerve in the spine is getting pressed. So I had a spine test done also. And then the, what did they do? They gave me a medicine, a tablet. What does that tablet do? That tablet depresses my mind. The tablet, all these uh, diazepam tablets, you know, all those pen pep tablets, they, they depress your, uh, the, um, uh, the MRI system. And then, you know, you lose that sense of pain and all. Now it is possible to achieve that state without the medicine, without the medicine, by focusing, focusing on the pain, the part of the body which is suffering, and focusing on it, putting all your energy. If you have seen Kung Fu, Kung Fu, the martial art of China, you know, the Kung Fu person, he puts a one inch thick, you know, glass sheet, and he takes a three inch or four inch long needle, sharp needle. And you, it is a very elaborate thing how he uh, concentrates all his body's energy in his hand. And when he is finally is concentrated, he throws it, he throws it, and that needle goes through one inch thick, you know, glass sheet. If you and I throw the needle at the glass sheet, it will bounce back and come and hit our hand. How does, how the, how does that man focus all his body's energy? You must have seen people who lie down on the earth ground and they, a car goes over them. You know, a wooden, wooden plate, laga ke car goes. Let you and I try. Bones hi crush ho so what does that man do? He inhales so much air. Inhales so much air in his body and retains so much that it doesn't get pressed. So he is doing something. He is doing this consciousness, Chetana, ke mujhe ye karna hai. and he controls his body. So this is the thing that we have to get. Then the third power is Garima, increasing the weight of the body. Weight of the body. Remember Angad? Angad, you know, put his leg on the ground. And nobody could lift the leg. He made it so heavy. Then Ravan came, but before Ravan could touch, he moved away because Ravan was a friend of his father. So it is not proper that a friend of his father should touch his feet. So he moved away. 
but you know he made his that so heavy that it can't hanuman in mahabharata when bhim is going through the forest you see there is an old hanuman lying down and his tail is there and bhim tells that hey hey vanar remove your tail he said i am too old i can't move you remove it and bhim is unable to remove it so increasing the weight then lagima assuming infinitely small dimension like wisp of cotton and traveling in the sky without aerial vehicles you can make your bhar your mass so light as you know that uh, lahiri mahashay whose uh, samadhi is in haridwar even today you know lahiri mahashay there are photographs of lahiri mahashay levitating he is sitting in meditation and his body goes up goes up there are photographs so it's not something that you know people make up so you make yourself so light so you get i hope uh, you are getting what i am trying to say lighting yourself like this you know then prapati you are settled in one place and you form sensory perceptions of distant objects sensory perception that is uh, ye ye to aise bhootiya lagta hai aise like a ghost ke aap baithe hue yahan and uh, somebody wants a flower and there is a garden about you know 200 yards away and you are able to pick up that flower from 200 yards away hmm? so there was a there was a joke that we used to tell in earlier days it was a joke made on this principle that a couple got married and they were in the room and uh, you know the the wife said let me switch off get up and switch off the light the man said you don't need to get up and he simply you know lengthened his arm and switched off the he lengthened his arm and switched off the light from the other side and people only heard a shriek <laughs> shriek in the next morning there was a dead body there so you know prapti you are in one place you can have sensory experience of distant objects prakamya experiencing things without experiencing them you know entering the rock not getting burnt fire me se nikal jana par burn nahi hote you have heard of people in tamil nadu who walk on coals burning coals but they don't get burnt advancing waters stop waters are coming seas the wave is coming but it stops but for example rama a rama step there you know see we drew see we drew so the body body stop i had a friend professor uh, he is no more i'm for the kashmir kashmir gentleman professor of english who one day in pune where he got caught hold of a of a bengali professor of english and told him that you know do you know that your body doesn't exist and he told him things like that he said if you want you can walk through the wall and that fellow after half an hour was so puzzled and all that he got up and he said excuse me sir i want to go away because he frightened him with all these things you can walk through the wall and you don't exist your body doesn't exist you are all air you know all that but it comes from these things which which are there in serious literature mind you all these things are explained in very serious literature there are texts then ishitwa performing extraordinary actions by implanting one's siddhi power in others including antar dhyana vidya you know we had a vidya where you become invisible you are no longer visible now you can make the other person invisible and and people will not discover who has done something lord krishna lifted the govardhan mountain govardhan mountain what did he do he reduced the weight of the govardhan mountain like you know the lagima he had the siddhi of lagima krishna krishna transferred that power to the mountain and was able to lift it was able to lift it hanuman when he brought the drona giri how could he bring the drona giri by this siddhi the siddhi which he transferred to the others so you transfer your power in that at a very gross level a good teacher 
he implants his knowledge in the disciple in the best of his students you see he implants his knowledge in the best of his students so it is implanting implanting your something from your consciousness in the consciousness of others and siddhis are you know which you acquire by yogic practices siddhis all these are siddhis and then vasitva taming and enthralling of the mighty mighty for example the story of kaliya nag and krishna you know krishna and kaliya nag krishna and putana you know how the child he was able to overcome the mighty mighty so these are which come through mind control control of the mind through yogic practices come to the next through control of senses and look at these knowledge of past future and and birth knowledge of what is far and indirect knowledge of all languages of all beings all bird languages animal languages knowledge of the mind working what is called psychology that is what you are thinking what you are thinking many times when we are talking to each other you we, we say how do you know that i was thinking of this you know those are instincts but when the instincts are turned into practice of the conscious knowledge then you can actually read the mind of the other person read the mind and the knowledge of what is going on under the earth's surface you have uh, the the water diviners in rajasthan even now who in the jaisalmer desert they walk on the sand hot sand and look down on the sand and they are able to know where 40 feet below the surface there is a band of clay wet clay wet clay and you know they dig there they digging in sand is difficult because sand falls back but the weeds which grow in the desert they are used to you know to embellish the sides as the man digs he digs with a patili is a small vessel and on his head he puts an inverted patila there were no helmet there are no helmets in the villages so he inverted patila and he keeps going down he keeps going digging small one and a half feet width as he goes down the oxygen becomes very less he is he is difficult to breathe so people villagers they throw earth on him upar se they throw earth so that he gets oxygen so he is wears a patili so that he is not hurt he reaches 40 feet band of clay and then you know puts the weed there and that hole remains intact at night the desert temperature falls falls to minus 30 minus 40 and the water in that band of clay congeals in the morning you have four buckets of water in that hole in that desert and the villagers take out that water they distribute equally among each other democratically and this water diviner he does not charge any money because if he if he makes it a profession to earn money he will lose the power power of divining so the knowledge of what is going on under the earth surface cosmography you know beyond what you can see in the sky what is the how is it the indians coined the word brahmand brahmand egg shaped universe elliptical which is what today's modern science says it is elliptical how did they know this they can't see it they didn't see it but cosmography you know from what is visible they go to the invisible invisible then the knowledge of remedies and their effects and powers how what jaise ab maa kehti hai zukam lagta hai haldi pilo so the old mothers in the village in that and these days the mothers don't know anything they only know how to tar, uh, use the mobile and you know facebook and uh, whatsapp and other things but in our time the mothers were the great doctors you see they knew haldi ka kya hai adrak ka kya hai ha huh? choti ilaichi ka kya hai badi ilaichi ka kya hai what are their effects and on what do they work these are common knowledge you have common knowledge of course the veda vedic ayurveda the whole science of ayurveda is there and the vedic people 
there were Vedic people, there were people, Vaidyas, Bhaishaj, they were called, who will simply just check your pulse. And just by checking your pulse, they will tell you everything, what's wrong with you, what's right with you. No ultrasound, no x-ray, no nerve isotopography, no x-ray of the spine, nothing. But you just hold the Nari, Nari Vigyana, and the element. So the knowledge of stars and astronomy and other effects. Go to the next slide. These are now 16 Devic powers. You see? The aid through ascetic restraint, ascetic powers, restraint, encountering, you know, people who actually see God. There are people who report the shadow personality. Ek prakarka ek, ek shadow personality Second, Balaka, an attainment called Kritya. You create a create a shadow. You create a shadow. In R.K. Narayan's book, The English Teacher, R.K. Narayan's English Teacher, if you haven't read it, please read it. Because uh, it is an autobiographical novel by R.K. Narayan. He had married a girl out of the Gotra. He was told not to marry. Uh, uh, a Manglik girl. He had married a Manglik girl. He was told don't marry, but he was too much in love with her. He married her and she had a daughter and that wife died after two years. He but spent all his life looking after that daughter and living in the memory of his wife. And an English teacher, he actually at night he sits in the balcony and he sees his wife and he talks to her. Just as Meera used to have seances with Krishna. The personality will split and in the male voice, she will also respond from Krishna and she will talk. So in the same way, uh, the English, Mira is 15th century, 16th century. You can say all Hindu mythology, but English teacher is by R.K. Narayan. It is modern, it is 20th century and he's actually describing his experiences his actual experiences. So, being able to see a soul leaving the body. If you read uh, Shandogya Upanishad, there, you know, the whole process of, of how conception takes place and from conception, how the embryo is formed step by step till life comes. Life. At what point the embryo starts ticking the heart starts beating and how then it evolves, the limbs come and all that. And then another place in Chandogya Upanishad, the reverse process. When a person dies, the reverse process follows. The first affects the limbs, then the abilities, then the senses, and finally the breath. And then the prana, the prana in the last gasp, the soul leaves the body. There are some people who actually, in fact, I did see at this, uh, some uh, para-psychic, uh, you know, gentleman's photograph of a soul leaving the body. We may not believe it, but it's believed that you can see the soul leaving the body. Extraordinary perception. Then being able to see dead people, those who have gone, you see them. In the, in the dreams, you often believe that you have actually seen the person. The person was there. You often believe sometimes that the person actually touched you. Touched you, you know. So mind in the dream state because mind has several levels of consciousness. The Jagrata, the Swapana, the Shukti and Turiya. Four states of heightened consciousness. So if in the Swapana or the Nidra stage, Nidra and the dream state, your mind is able to see people who are long dead and feel them. What will happen if you achieve the Turiya state of consciousness? Turiya state of consciousness. And that is where, you know, you will see the divine also. And also. Next, seeing the cosmic emanation, five to eight, because eight, eight are these, these are five. Cosmic emanation, you know, sun, sun ke flares or something, you know, which is happening to the stars. Without the telescope, after all, Indian astronomers knew 
that the earth is round so they called geography bhugol round earth huh? but uh, the arabs even today believe that the earth is flat and galileo had to see through a telescope and when he said it then you know he was punished his telescope his toy was taken away from him and he was put in the prison then he said i am sorry i didn't see in fact i was telling a lie i saw nothing then his telescope was given back to him then whatever he saw he never reported you see so you know how does it how is it that you had the word brahmand or you have the word bhugola so you know cosmic emanations being without the telescope although there is a there is a sculpture in a temple in temple 12th century temple where a lady is seeing through a telescope like instrument you see and if you have seen that uh, that film kya tha jo do bhag mein thi badi popular hui thi usme you see the warriors you know using and looking at the enemy through a telescope maha mahishmati mahishmati ke ke sath yuddh ho raha hai and you see the warriors you see so telescope but we didn't we our our methodology our methodology is not observational in these divya vidya the methodology is not observation it is you go inside you go inside and you go inside yourself and through the mind and the senses by training restraining the minds and senses you achieve certain abilities the next one is vishwa roop or virat roop maya vahamo you know a kind of uh, again a illusory image that you see ek bada jaise if we were is afraid of something hum if we are afraid of somebody agar chhota sa suppose hum we are going in a forest and we see a small bear cub and we get scared and we come back what do we say itna bada bear is itna bada huge you know huge although it was a cub you know your mind has enlarged it so virata roop the vishwa roop it's a creation of the mind huh? arjun seeing the virata roop of krishna virata roop of krishna then the sooth say predicting the future of a person what will happen what will not happen and you know so on and so on the science that analyzes different customs and traditions and rationalizes them this is very empirical in fact that is how we who human beings communities behave differently and why communities behave differently and why why are marriage customs different huh? why in the north you know people can't marry the cousins in the southern communities you can marry the cousin why what are the reasons or why for example the girls are not given uh, part in the land landed property portion why are they given only gold and silver so these have to be explained so these are explained the science that analyzes these things go next next please through body control restraints restraints through the body control control of the body becoming shapeless and formless you know instead of people seeing you as a person they simply see a kind of a, a bale of cotton lying there you know ek dher laga hua hai sand ka you see ability to enter a foreign body dusre ke sharir mein chale jana hamare yahan in the folk belief फोक बिलीफ माना जाता है कि इसको भूत चढ़ गया है ना ये इन इनफैक्ट देर आर स्टोरीज इन माय ओन फैमिली ऑफ द एल्डर सम लेडीज यू नो हु 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 ईज्ड देमसेल्स्स अंडर ए ट्री और उनको भूत चढ़ गया एंड यू नो हर वॉइस चेंज्ड बिकेम मेल एंड हर एपिटाइट बिकॉज सो मच शी वुड ईट 40 30 लिटर किलोस ऑफ फूड एवरी टाइम and then you know you get the person who is trained in this wo jhad phoong jhadu wagera jo bhi hota hai but we do dismiss these things but these are psychic conditions conditions of the mind and the conditions of the mind have to be treated either with diazepam tablets or with some practices which replace those tablets which replace those tablets 
science of taking away life killing without using a weapon i don't say you can kill with your eyes of course that is also killing without weapons and uh, there is a there is a play elizabethan play which is you know a woman killed with kindness huh? a woman killed with kindness or there is no instrumentality there but you take away the life of a person with other things divine power of resurrecting the dead the dead there are actually stories in our uh, epics in our other puranas texts where the dead are re resurrected and of course we have the great resurrection of christ you know and then immobile resuscitating knowledge that is how somebody who loses life how he is brought back to life brought back to life by resuscitation recently there was a case in andhra where a child was born but the a girl but she was not breathing she was not breathing she didn't cry she was not breathing and the nurse who was a very elderly nurse she breathed into her mouth the child's mouth sustainedly breathed hard into the child's mouth for 30 minutes and then the child started breathing so that is great it is actually actually it has happened about a month two months three months back and that is actually a case of you know immobile resuscitating resuscitating the knowledge that you can uh, just as people say if somebody has a heart attack and his heart stops functioning you hit him on the heart or you breathe into his mouth so this is a knowledge which was a science kaya nigrahani you know sometimes when you are walking in the evening alone alone and it is a lonely road you have an eerie feeling that somebody is walking behind you have you ever experienced it i have experienced it uh, in fact sometimes if you go to a strange let's say to a guest house or a hotel in which you are the only person and you know at night when you go to your room or you will get up at night in the room dark you feel that somebody is there you feel that somebody is there chaya nigrahani there is a presence and how to get rid of that how to get rid of this this chaya chaya is shadow shadows that you are scared of i hope you are with me you may think i am now telling you stories which are very interesting but but mind you mind you your literature is full of examples and i am giving you parallel examples from life where a smaller version of these things actually happens you are walking alone at night in a forest i assure you that at some time or the other you will feel that there is somebody coming behind you and you will turn around and you will see nobody but you will again walk and again you will feel somebody is falling following you it's something which is a, a fear you have constructed something in you the knowledge of shape shifting you see shape shifting that you become a, a horse or you become a bird you you change your roop and the knowledge of sex change there was a very classic example of shikhandi Shikhandi in Mahabharata. You see. Next, I am hurrying a little so that we go through all these. Sixteen yagya ka sacrificial powers. Eight based on the senses. Snake attracting power. Yeah, you know there are snake charmers who attract the snakes. Restrictive control over fire and water. Control the fire and control water. You know people fire walkers. fire walkers and people who for example a very not everybody can swim in the ocean particularly a tumultuous ocean but the ability to control turbulent water it doesn't come only by you know swimming swimming ability people tell you then that you turn up 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 way down upside and become a dead body you become a dead body then you will float but if you struggle to swim you will drown so these are there are other things also which gives you this uh, ability powers of indestructibility 
something that cannot be destroyed i have not read this in detail but you know the power that you take something and you challenge anybody to break it it will not break it will not crash it will not do and some people themselves are indestructible ashwatthama hanuman and there are two others who say they are still around they are not they are not they are not they didn't die those who do not die then suppressing and favoring powers powers to suppress and power to favor kisi ko kisi ko koi cheez ke ye tu ja ab tere ko aaj ke baad tere ko mithai nahi milegi tune mujhe nahi khilaya rasgulla tere ko agla ek hafta rasgulla nahi milega aur bless karna कोई आपको गर्मी में पानी पिलाए बच्ची या बच्चा तो के बेटा जीती रहो लंबी उम्र पाओ खुश रहो तो यू आर बिस्टोइंग ए फेवर एंड इट वर्क्स इट वर्क्स दीज थिंग्स वर्क द पावर टू फैसिलिटेट द बर्थ ऑफ ए सन देयर आर हर्ब्स हर्ब्स व्हिच आर प्रिस्क्राइब इन फैक्ट गंधारी इज चिल्ड्रन द द जेतराष्टव्स 100 चिल्ड्रन वर बोर्न बाय दैट प्रैक्टिस द हर्बल प्रैक्टिस the power over monsoon rains varsha ka upar control ke varsha kab aayegi badal aa gaya hai varsh nahi raha hai but the cloud is there it is not raining how to make the cloud rain aajkal isko kehte hain seeding the clouds you know seeding the clouds but you can imagine your ancient india had thought of these things how can you make the cloud rain then upon a patriyam you know controlling your breath controlling your breath breath for endless amount of time you can simply you know you can stay under under the ground you must have heard of some swamis they go under the earth and they stay there for 10 days without oxygen without oxygen and then the knowledge of honey this is not uh, uh, honey that the husband uses for the wife or it is not the honey of patanjali it is uh, you can draw honey from the rays of the sun you can draw you can draw other chemicals from the rays of the sun some people you have you might have heard of a person who claims that in the last 20 years he has simply lived on the rays of the sun nothing else so you can draw nourishment from the rays of the sun that science knowledge of honey then next agamaya yagyik attainments power to kill is you stay away from the even distant from the power to the power to kill now these days you have missiles and you have you know all the all the missiles that you have seen in ukraine and in ramayan mahabharata also i have not brought that in here we have a long details of weaponry armaments you see but killing by by a curse killing by a curse and setting a person on fire or drowning a person by a curse this is the power meant here enchantment power that is you enchant some some moh karna some mohit karna some moh so that the person follows your mind's instructions you walk 10 yards you turn right you turn left some mohan you know this is done by psychiatrists when they put you in a certain level of sleep then they talk to you and you speak in that state of mind you come out with things that you normally don't so that is the power enchantment power of ruining the adversaries these are not very happy things but you know these were done this is what came under you know jadu tona ke usko uska bana liya aur usko ye kiya uske ek you know mom ka ek candle ki candle ka uska putla bana liya roz usme pin lagaya roz pin lagaya you know something like that so these are these are things powers which have been misused at the end of it i say just as that chelobanji chelobanji is that rajasthan man 
who divines water under jaisalmer desert the cherwanji does not earn money from this because that will be misuse of his power and if he misuses his power he will lose his power so if these things are used actually without sufficient cause so there has to be a moral moral overriding principle on the use of these powers imperious curse shrap dena bahut kahaniyan hain shrap ki mahabharat ke end pe hai durvasa kehte hain krishna ko ke tum ruk jao when krishna is going to see gadhari tum ruk jao main tumhe shrap deta hu kyunki tum chahte to ye yuddh nahi hota and krishna says don't give me shrap so, uh, rishi i will i will countermand it and i don't want that your rishi shrap should be countermanded because shrap ki definition hai something that cannot be countermanded but then when he goes to gandhari gandhari says main tumhe shrap deti hu now krishna who could countermand a rishi he could have countermanded gandhari but he doesn't jo shrap deti hai tum bhi apne apne kul ka nash dekhoge jaise maine dekha and he smiles she says why are you smiling he said ma mother i have i had in any case i had to destroy the yadavas now you have given me a cause i will now say because you have given a shrap i want your shrap to be fulfilled so curse shrap many times mothers when they get very annoyed with their son with their child they kehte hain ja tera kuch na bane you know tumhara kuch nahi banega you know see nothing good will happen to you this is a form of shrap but because it is a mother it doesn't work but there is there are times when when somebody speaks ill of you it can affect you it does affect you so petrifying attainment that is you are able to make a person stop in his tracks petrify stop in his tracks attracting you can make a person who is walking away from you you can make that person turn round and come back and meet you you know that is the power and then protective defensive attainment to, to protect yourself and defend yourself without actually having any weapon in your hand in fact many of the martial arts martial arts come under this category and kerala is the home of martial arts is the home of uh, kung fu also go next great drug power well that is very clear aushadhis the herbals the herbs which are used to resurrect the dead which resurrect and revive people which heal arrow wounds which establish caste class homogeneity matlab jo ek community jo aapas mein theek ek family large family jo aapas mein achhi tarah nahi baithti koi aisi herb jisse wo khush ho jaye jaise holi wale din sabko bhang pila do to sab khush ho jate hain so the caste and community they get together caste and class homogeneity that is a community which is not together you can make them come together by certain herbs like bhang for example on holi you know or when seven person are sitting five of good friends two are not very good friends or three are not very good friends of them but you give drinks to all of them you know they all become friends for some time when they over drink they all become enemies you see so the herbs have the effect of promoting homogeneity or disrupting homogeneity that which seeks out and finds the ability to know what is not knowable what is not knowable now you this again not digitizable how do you know somebody is sitting here some very gross friend of yours is just normal normal with you but then you say ke tum aaj kuch theek nahi lag raha there is some problem what is the problem he said no 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 i am perfectly fine isn't it it happens na that a person is totally normal but you feel no there is something wrong now that instinct it can be trained trained and it can become then a science that which extracts and cures that is a herbal science you know haldi ko kaise istemal karna hai peesna hai kitna peesna hai patla peesna hai mota peesna hai and all that that which helps in delivery of a child so you see uh, this was a science delivery and you know the in villages and it it applied to animals as well as human beings the science 
एंड पावर पोर्शन एंड चार्म्स ये जो है दिस कम्स अंडर जादू टोना हरी मिर्च के साथ नींबू बांध देना हुँ? या रास्ते में जिस रास्ते पे लोग चलते हैं वहां रख देना किसी को बीमारी है तो उसके ऊपर उसको करके रास्ते में रख दो कि हेल्दी आदमी का पैर पड़ेगा तो वो बीमारी ट्रांसफर हो जाएगी होती नहीं है बिकॉज दीज पावर पोर्शन एंड चार्म्स वर्क ओनली इफ यू यूज दम फॉर द गुड ऑफ अदर्स एंड नॉट इफ यू डू इट फॉर ईवल नेक्स्ट मैकेनिकल पावर हेयर यू हैव ऑल दी एयरक्राफ्ट the celestial vimana shape like a chariot three wheeled like your auto rickshaw a three wheeled but the difference that it flies in the air these days you have cars which fly in the air you know you have cars which can take off and james bond movies you he had the car which would you know suddenly go up and jump and fly and then come down again pushpak viman in the form of a swan which was multi storied in which rama came back along with everybody city shaped the lunar vehicle which goes to the moon travels to the moon so your isro is not the first one to send something to the moon people had imagined that you can go to the moon a driver driven vehicle in the shape of a boat driver driven not self driven driver driven shape of a boat a vehicle in the shape of two horses floating vehicle in the shape of a bird it is a bird bird shape but it does not fly it floats then cows that give nectar of immortality like the kamadhenu kamadhenu kehte hain ki ye jo kali gaye hoti hai ya jo saurashtra ki gaye hai jo particular breeds hain unke jo milk mein aur ghee mein jo properties hoti hain wo har ek milk mein nahi hoti so nectar of immortality it is basically knowledge of dairy a dairy knowledge dairy dairy knowledge of how to make stones float on water which is what rama did in building the ram setu and uh, two things are described there in this one they they the stones ke andar vacuum ho jata hai create usko sched karke usko andar khod ke sched band kar dete hain and the stone ka volume bada hai it begins to float and the other is that when the mass the principle is when the mass of the object is more than the mass of the environment it sinks when it is equal it floats when the mass is less then it flies so the same principle same principle explains flying floating and sinking sinking and this is there in the vasheshika vasheshika principle next please sources of these sciences in ke source kya hai there are statements about these sciences in vedas in brahman granthas and in shastras patanjali is the yoga sutra deals with the nigama and yogic siddhis two words are missing yoga sutra deals with deals with the nigama and yogic siddhis these both name and often describe patanjali yoga sutra names and describe how these attainments are achieved epics and the narrative literature give abundant examples of the exercise of these powers third texts also talk of the moral limits of the use of these abilities and powers misuse leads to loss of the powers all right i think this is the last how to study all these sciences to reactivate them you know enormous people have given them up now some of these things creating an illusion for example shadow we see this happening in the films a vast niagara fall is shown there is no niagara you know you are shown a train you know train moving fast behind the uh, behind the actors but there is no train it's like it's only an image which is being dragged so many of these sciences have disappeared men some have come to the magicians others are there in modern technology but how to study them and reactivate them but all these the sources of all these are available examples are available and these are the abilities these are the powers and sciences which are unique we have all the modern sciences so if you want to focus on them fine but this is where 
the Vedic sciences, Divya, Divya Vidya, are extraordinary. And the world has always respected India for them. Your rishis, your yogis, you know, great yogis, your rishis, the, uh, the, the sannyasis, you know, who stay in the Himalayas, who can stay naked in minus 30, minus 40 degree C and even play with snow, you know. So they have those powers. How those powers are attained, that is the subject matter of research. Okay? Thank you very much. Sir, could you suggest, uh, please suggest a list of authors who have written good, detailed, um, in-depth descriptions right. and explanations okay. of okay. the various okay. topics you covered today for yes, novices? Yes, yes. Because we there is, a, there is a book, Indra Vijayam. Indra Vijayam. Okay. It was composed in a, in a Sanskrit work and then around 18th century. Indra Vijayam by Madhusudan Ojaji. And that book is available in Rupas. I, along with my friends like Rajneesh, we translated it into English. Eh? It's a big book. But the author, Ojaji, he has put together a lot of knowledge from all the Vedic Vangmai, you know, from the Vedas and Upanishads and the Brahmanas. And he has given detailed of several disciplines of India's geography, of India's philosophy, of India's sciences. Sir, it's absolute pleasure to hear uh, you uh, whenever uh, one gets that good fortune. I have been uh, hearing your lectures maybe for now seven, eight years. And uh, I wish and pray that it will continue for as long as it is possible. Um, I remember uh, two, three points which were very relevant. Uh, one is uh, that uh, there is data, there are facts then there is information and then there is wisdom. And I believe what you said was, and I remember from the previous lectures, you gave two drashtans when you were traveling to Kedarnath and you happened to buy cigarettes from one of the persons. And then you asked him at that this remote location, why don't you uh, charge a little higher? And that Much person <laughs> and that yes. person said uh, that, uh, mein ho jata hai. Yes. so that kind of wisdom is not uh, wo, wo, uh, formal education ki mohtaj nahi hai. Ji, 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 ji. Sir, ek aur example aapke lecture se mujhe yaad aata hai when you were sitting somewhere close to BHU Lanka Gate and we were discussing about uh, the, the pollution in Ganga water and somebody, uh, villager perhaps, told that Ganga ka paani hamesha shudh hai, gandagi to usse alag hai. Now, this kind of wisdom also is not really uh, incidental to a formal college, factual, yes. empirical kind of education. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. maybe you will tell a little more. Uh, I wanted to draw very specifically uh, your attention to this aspect of knowledge. Second was the kind of knowledge which, of course, you have elaborated a lot, but uh, when you elevate or reach higher state of consciousnesses, then there are things and experiences both opening to you, which are not uh, well, no, not normal experiences, not bound by the physics of the world. So tell us a little more about this, sir. Yes, Thank yes, you. yes. You see, Patanjali himself says that the state of samadhi can be achieved. Samadhi is a very high state of consciousness. You see. Nirvikalpa is the highest. Sarvikalpa, Nirvikalpa. You know, where they, the, it is simply the experiential knowledge without the words, accompanying words. Deep state of enlightenment, you know, kind. So, Patanjali says that Samadhi can be attained by following the yogic processes, yoga wale, or by drugs also. Samadhi drugs se bhi lagti. और जेएनयू में मैं एग्जांपल देता था क्लास में रजनीश जी हंसने लग जाएंगे कि मैं कहता था कि जब विस्की चार दोस्त बैठ के पीते हैं तो जब तीन चार पैक हो जाते हैं पांच तो एक दूसरे को बैक स्लैप करते हैं दो जी ने तू मेरा दोस्त है वो कहते हैं हां मैं तेरा दोस्त हूं 
नहीं तू मेरा दोस्त है कहते हाँ भाई मैं तेरा दोस्त हूं नहीं मैं कह रहा हूं तू मेरा दोस्त है और फिर लड़ने लग जाते हैं और एक पॉइंट तक कन रियालिटी उसके बाद जो हिडन हिडन जो सब करंट है रिलेशनशिप में वो सरफेस पे आ जाती है किसी तो ये तो मतलब ड्रग्स में और देखिए आपने पता नहीं कभी पी होगी शराब पीनी चाहिए वैसे अच्छी चीज होती है क्योंकि अल्कोहल इज ए सैनिटाइजर यू नो गेस दिस कोविड ऑल्सो तो अल्कोहल के अपने इफेक्ट्स हैं भांग के अपने इफेक्ट्स हैं गांजा और अफीम अफीम के अपने इफेक्ट्स हैं किसी एंड मैरिजोन मरीजुआना एंड द रूट्स ऑफ परसेप्शन डोर ऑफ परसेप्शन जिसने लिखी है ना साइकेडेलिक मैजिक मशरूम कहते हैं सर साइकेडेलिक वाला मेडिसिन अब देखिए उसमें उस ड्रग में क्या होता है कि व्हेन यू टेक दैट ड्रग तो देयर आर नो स्ट्रेट लाइंस नो स्ट्रेट लाइंस आई एम सिटिंग इन दिस रूम एवरीथिंग विल बिकम वेवी वेवी द क्वेश्चन अराइजेस व्हाट इज द रियलिटी ऑफ दिस रूम because take a gross example a standing train a train which is standing looks a certain length it has certain length when it travels at 160 km it looks very small so what is the reality of that train an aeroplane which comes near you is very big put it push it A thousand, two thousand feet, it becomes small. So it's not only the, it's not only the visual. Because in the case of uh, the psychedelic, it's not visual. It's not visual only. It's not visual. It is the mind, which is now distorting the images. In Bhanga, you know, you feel that you are sitting at the bottom of a lake of cool water. Hmm? Cool water. and then you gradually come up so the point is if the mind mind at different levels can be altered the perception is altered knowledge is altered if we train our mind in a, in a particular mode of perception then we are controlling the mind to gain a particular kind of knowledge that is the whole argument of these sciences I would want your permission to quote you because I am a researcher in the area of marijuana and hemp. Hmm. Hemp, uh, although my angle was more from sustainability, sustainable agriculture, carbon sequestering, but then once you are studying a man, obviously you cannot uh, avoid studying his hand and only study his nose, etc., etc. So I research, and then of course I have studied the. what is called as anthogenic properties which you have just prescribed so wonderfully and yes the drugs sometimes give you uh, cross perceptions which means you will see a song and you will hear a picture that kind yes, of yes, yes, yes i would wish to hear professor mishra also sometimes on altered uh, state of consciousness yeah, yeah, yeah. as prescribed in yeah. kashmir shaivism i think he should want to address for example in our uh, phonetics also every sound has a color you know the sound has a color you know this is really crossing the lines you know and the sound has a god every sound has a god and every sound has a color and every color has a psychic effect you know lal rang jo hota hai agar aap kamre mein jahan sote ho why don't you paint it red पेस्टल कलर्स क्यों लगाते हैं सो इफ साउंड हैज ए कलर द कलर हैज अ रिलेशनशिप टू द माइंड नेचुरली साउंड ऑब्वियसली म्यूजिक है ना इट हैज एन इट हैज दिस एंड देन दी साउंड्स हैव रिलेशनशिप टू टाइम यू नो सर्टेन रागास आर फॉर द मॉर्निंग सम आर फॉर नून सम आर फॉर द इवनिंग एंड पानिनी आई थिंक इन इज इन इज शिक्षा He has referred to these things. Sir, Pranam sir. Uh, sir, uh, मेरा क्वेश्चन है uh, ये जो आपने नॉलेज सिस्टम बताया श्रुति स्मृति एंड काव्य 
तीन तरीके से हम लोग नॉलेज लेते हैं तो इसके ऊपर अगर थोड़ा और जैसे जी 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 ये जी आज के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में कैसे समझा जाए देखिए ये ये नॉलेज लेने के साधन नहीं है ऑल दो दर्ड सजेस्ट दोसेस दीज आर कैटेगरीज ऑफ नॉलेज टाइप्स ऑफ नॉलेज एंड दैरामीटर इज कंटिजेंट एंड नॉन कंटिजेंट नॉलेज विच डिपेंड्स ऑन समबडी समथिंग सम प्लेस और नॉलेज विच इज इंडिपेंडेंट ऑफ प्लेस टाइम एंड पर्सन श्रुत ज्ञान दैट इज रिसीव्ड लाइक महात्मा बुद्ध सिटिंग अंडर अ बोधि ट्री एंड देन अ फ्लैश कम स्टेट यू सी तो इट्स ही रिसीव दिस नॉलेज थ्रू ए थ्रू नॉट ए नॉर्मल अपिस्टेमोलॉजी कोई नॉर्मल अपिस्टेमोलॉजी उसमें नहीं है कि उन्होंने कोई रीजनिंग यूज की उन्होंने एक्सपेरियंस एक्सपेरिमेंट किया कोई एक्सपीरियंस किया इट कम्स एज ए फ्लैश जेम्स जॉयस अपने नॉवलों में शब्द यूज करते हैं एपीफनी एपीफनी एक मोमेंट होती है जब सडनली जैसे जब हम कभी पढ़ते हैं और कोई चीज समझ नहीं आती है बहुत कोशिश करते हैं फिर हम उसको छोड़ देते हैं और किचन में जाके चाय कॉफी बनाते हैं और जैसे ही कॉफी तैयार होती है अचानक अंदर से फ्लैश आता है अरे उसका तो ये मतलब है दिस इज द मीनिंग सो इट कम्स टू यू नॉट फ्रॉम ए नॉर्मल अपिस्टमोलॉजी सो श्रुत ज्ञान इज ए नॉलेज विच इज रिसीव्ड बाय ए हाईली इवॉल्व ह्यूमन बींग इन डीप मेडिटेशन डीप कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इट इज कॉल्ड योगी प्रत्यक्ष योगी प्रत्यक्ष एंड इन ब्रॉडली रफ ट्रांसलेशन डायरेक्ट एपरसेप्शन डायरेक्ट एपरसेप्शन इन ब्रॉड एंड श्रुति देर फोर इज द वेदाज आर कॉल्ड श्रुति बिकॉज वेदाज आर नॉट कंटिजेंट ऑन ए पर्सन प्लेस और टाइम वट दे से इज ऑल टाइम ट्रू ऑल टाइम ट्रू सो दे आर लाइक द लॉज ऑफ साइंस तो वेद प्रमाण शब्द प्रमाण फाइनल प्रूफ पीपल ऑफन गिव इन आवर ट्रेडिशन पर्टिकुलरली द वेदांत ब्राह्मण संप्रदाय इज के श्रुति भी यही कहती है बट द श्रुति हैज बीन यूज बाय कंपीटिंग सिस्टम्स आल्सो यू नो लाइक द चारवाका आल्सो यूज द सेम श्रुति टू प्रूव दैट आत्मा डजंट एग्जिस्ट एंड द वैष्णवाइट्स एंड द वेदांत use the same shruti atma deh mai to prove that atma exists so you have to interpret but then the knowledge is non contingent smriti is a recalled knowledge here now there is some some great mind some person who collects the knowledge which already exists maybe in the people public or in the tradition tradition and he puts it together smriti to shastra jo hai शास्त्र जो है फिलोसफी है या नाट्य शास्त्र है या इवन यू नो जितने संग्रह ग्रंथ हैं देर इज कलेक्शन हमारी ट्रेडिशन में वो सारे स्मृतियों में आते हैं स्मृति मिलिटरी मीन्स मेमोरी एंड इट इज ब्यूटिफुली डिफाइंड इन योग सूत्र स्मृति स्मृति वट इज स्मृति एन एक्सपीरियंस दैट रिफ्यूज टू गो अवे जनरली दुख सुख होता है कोई बड़ा गहरा विच रिफ्यूज टू गो वे वो स्मृति है पर मेमरी सो मेमरी स्मृति आर टेक्स नॉलेज ऑलरेडी एग्जिस्ट श्रुति में नॉलेज इज रिसीव न्यू नॉलेज एंड द रिसीवर इज अनोन अनोनिमस हेयर देर इज ए स्मृति में द रिसीवर देर आर रिसीवर दे मे बी कॉल्ड बाई ए नेम एनी नेम कन्नाद है या गौतम है या कुछ है भरत मुनि है ये वो ये रिकॉर्ड नॉलेज and but then still it has it is it is it has a great validity validity iski validity hai next to shruti iski validity hai valid knowledge kavya is knowledge created in the imagination mind of a poet of an of an individual so the least validity use aap contingent is a shastra kavya position काव्य में अगर आपने ज्ञान प्राप्त करना है तो शास्त्र में जाइए काव्य तो आनंद के लिए काव्य आनंद 
However, रजनीश जी सोच रहे हैं कि मैं कब वो अगली बात कहूंगा हाउ एवर अभिनव गुप्त और रजनीश जी इज मास्टर ऑफ अभिनव गुप्त अभिनव गुप्त सेज के शाब्दिक ज्ञान वर्ड्स का पोइट्री का वो उसका वो परोक्ष ज्ञान है बिकॉज आई रीड आई रीड ए लाइन ए पोइट्री आई रीड ए स्टोरी एंड आई इमेजिन द करेक्टर्स इन माई माइंड नॉन प्रेजेंट नॉलेज नॉलेज ऑफ द नॉन प्रेजेंट ठीक है ना परोक्ष ज्ञान बट अभिनव गुप्त से परोक्ष ज्ञान इज एज गुड एज प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान जैसे आपने अपनी आंखों से देखा एंड ही गिव्स एन एग्जाम्पल आपने घोड़े का एक चित्र देखा आपने घोड़ा शब्द सुना कोई कह रहा है कह रहे वो मैंने घोड़ा देखा घोड़ा बड़ा सुंदर घोड़ा और आपने घोड़े का चित्र देखा या आपने एक्चुअली घोड़ा देखा सामने खड़ा अब एक स्कूल कहेगा कि एक्चुअली व्हेन यू सी दी हॉर्स दैट इज दी ट्रू नॉलेज अभिनव गुप्त सेज ऑल दी थ्री आर ट्रू परोक्ष ज्ञान भी प्रत्यक्ष है क्योंकि जो आप घोड़ा देखते हो आंखों से वो भी आपकी आंखों के पीछे इमेज बनाता है आप उस घोड़े को नहीं देख रहे उस घोड़े का इमेज देख रहे और दो चार व्यक्ति उस घोड़े को देखेंगे एक कहेगा बड़ा सुंदर है एक कहेगा यार ये तो कुछ ठीक नहीं लगता घोड़ा है ना इसका मतलब है वो इमेज जो बनता है और जब आप घोड़े का चित्र देखते हो तब भी इमेज बनता है और जब आप शब्द सुनते हो घोड़ा तब भी इमेज बनता है तो ऑल द थ्री have the same status as knowledge